Hi, I'm Sammy, and I'm the creative director of Ghetto, and this is Alter Daily. My middle name is Tutu, and when I started this brand, I was like, it's going to be called Tutu, or maybe even Tutu, like all that kind of thing. It was taken, like legally, <laughs> so I was like, what do I do? And I had all sorts of weird names, like Sunshine can tell you, I had names like Tough, my friend, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, like my, my best friend could tell you, like I had names like Tough Stuff, which was really cool in my head. Everyone was like, okay. <laughs> like, I had like really random names. And then one day I was watching that Netflix documentary, um, the one, The Evolution of Hip Hop. Yeah, and it was an episode and they were talking about the Ghetto Boys. And I was like, I don't know what it is. So my whole life I never really used to listen to their music and after watching that episode I was listening to all their music and I was obsessed and I was like I love the spelling of ghetto I think it's so cool and and then I was like you know what I think it's a really cool name for my brand because it's how I dress like people always say like I dress so like my friends would be like oh like this is so raz like all these big earrings big like it's so ghetto and I was like yeah I love that vibe like the ghetto fabulous thing. So I took the spelling from them. Then I added the dots above the E because of, um, you know, like Moet, Cha Moet Champagne. I thought it was quite cool to have the dots above the E. And that's how, it, yeah. And also just the idea of like, cause I'm not like from, like I know I'm not from the hood and everything. So it's like, you know, we got a little, a little champagne. <laughs> like, <laughs> make it more to myself yeah so when I moved back I was basically like styling people freelance and working for different companies like street work companies in Lagos and I just didn't really f know where I kind of fit in but I just knew I wanted to work in fashion and so I started working for Tiffany Amber as her design assistant and then there I kind of figured out like oh I can actually like do this like I can do the sketching I can come up with working in a factory, I can work in a store, and I became really passionate about it. And so then when I kind of finished working there, I decided to go off on my own. And my parents were really, really freaked out about it. They were like, wait, you're gonna quit your job, like, this is a really good job, everything. And it was, it was really hard in the beginning, because I was actually like, I had no money. I just started making shit, I made t-shirts, made, some random dresses, some pajama sets, like, okay, hopefully people like, like it or they at least want to wear it. At least my friends, <laughs> like, I wasn't sure. And I launched last summer and the response was like overwhelming. Like, it was crazy. And I knew I should, I knew that this is something I should stick with when like people who weren't my friends we're like, oh, this is really cool. Because you know your friends will always tell you, oh, it's cool, like, we'll wear it. Maybe they'll wear it once, never again. And I'm like, okay, wait, like, people I don't even know are really messing with it. So I stuck with it. My parents started supporting it. Maybe when they saw the collection, before I even started selling, I showed it to my mom and dad, and they were just like, whoa, like, you're actually meant to do this. Like, keep pushing. And that's when I started getting their support on it, and it's... It's been really cool, like, the support has been crazy, like, family, friends, people I just meet, like, randomly, it's been really cool. Because when I started it, I was really aware of the fact that because of social media, we get to see so many different designers and so many different, like, stores, just random clothes pop up randomly and you forget it's in your head and you can end up copying. Mm. So what I wanted to do was make Ghetto exactly my childhood with my first collection so it was early 2000s and 90s were my childhood so I remember the movies I used to watch and movies I started watching again because I was obsessed with like that era the music I used to listen to everything even the school I went to what we used to talk about the games we used to play and I like wrote everything down so for the first few months of ghetto, I wasn't actually doing anything but writing stuff down and talking to my friends. Like that's actually what helped me the most. It was talking to my friends, like just, oh, you remember that game we used to play? Remember that movie? And they'll be like, yeah, like, oh, remember that shirt that guy wore? Write it down, mm, shirt, yeah. purple. <laughs> like, <laughs> so that was kind of what I did. And eventually I realized like, wow, it's actually, 
hip hop mm -hmm. that pushes me because I always say to people like if I didn't work in fashion I would definitely want to be like A and R or like work in music because I'm obsessed with music and like I've always been told that I have like a good ear. I mean I ain't gonna say it. Are you? Okay, so I have a new job at Alta Daily. <laughs> 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 but yeah, like I'm really into music and stuff. So obviously I, tr I really try to involve music into my collection. My first collection was a lot of TLC influences. Like my, my friends and I watched that TLC biopic and we used to like copy all like the dance moves. And I remember like writing down things that I thought would look cool now. Like we could actually wear it now and look different and just, you know, so... That's kind of where the hip hop thing came from. It was more like, this is what I used to listen to. So yeah, I'm trying to go again with the idea of it's me, it's what I'm into. So I am into more than just hip hop. So I don't want it to be like, oh, she, she's only into that 90s thing. But it is something that's part of the DNA of the brand and I can never really run away from it because it's what like makes me think of silhouettes and think of colors and stuff. But I think, yeah, I'm really, really into color. Yeah. But like this is from that collection, like the rainbow thing. So I started getting more influences from late 60s rock, early 70s rock. So like Jimi Hendrix and things like that. So in terms of color palettes and fabrics, kind of like that rocker chic like vibe. Yeah. And then also keeping that 90s hip hop influence as well at the same time, kind of mixing it all together. Because even the first collection, it was 90s, but like the tops, they were corsets from like a movie about King Henry VIII. Like I literally took their gowns and made them into crop tops. And that was how I came up with it. So before this year, everything was sourced in Nigeria. So like I'd go to the market, figure everything out. And then I realized like that's really expensive. <laughs> so um, I took a trip with my mom, who's now like, number one fan of ghetto in the world. And we went to Dubai together and we went to like these marketplaces and I found like these huge gems, like really, really big, like Diamante gems. I'm gonna add, I have another collection coming up. So like the way I design is like, I'll probably do two at a time. And then as one comes out, I'll focus more on the other one. So the one that's next, next, it's gonna be really heavily influenced with like, Diamantes and adding of frills and I'm obsessed with Alele May, the stylist girl. Like I think she's so cool, and I feel like my clothes would look really good on her. So I just feel like someone like her, how she worked with like Jordan and everything like that. I think she would be someone that I would really want to work with, for sure. Can ghetto fab be one word? We'll put the. <laughs>